Zero trust is a security strategy that says you shouldn't grant implicit trust to a user, device, or an application based solely around some property about them, like their network location. Over the next few minutes, I'll explain exactly what we mean by this and how IBM can help. But let's be really clear upfront. Zero trust isn't something that can simply be delivered by implementing a new piece of technology, nor is it a point product or service that you can just go out and buy. It's a security strategy that has three core principles. But before I come on to those, let me explain why organizations are increasingly moving on from the previous popular model of perimeter security. Firstly, there's this somewhat medieval notion that you have a perimeter to your network where you build the walls as high as possible and try and stop malicious actors at the gates. This no longer works because employees are working from home more than they're working from the office and because hybrid cloud is now clearly the preeminent platform for enterprise infrastructure. So it's an increasingly complex problem to even define a perimeter. Secondly, the concept of trust is a very human one that we've taught computers to adapt to. For example, if I see Helen every day in the office wearing her employee badge, I trust that she's an employee and is there for the right reasons. In reality, I don't actually know that she wasn't let go last week for misconduct and is now back in the office trying to steal corporate data. So a computer security model based on a human definition of trust is inherently flawed, particularly in a world where attackers are finding it easier than ever to steal credentials and disguise themselves as trustworthy. Without a zero trust security model, once an attacker is in the corporate network, they can move laterally to new systems with relative ease. This brings me on to the first defining principle of the zero trust model. Never trust, always verify. Just because somebody's on your corporate network and is carrying that badge with an employee name on it doesn't mean that they are who they say they are or that they're necessarily well-intentioned. So this always verify piece refers to the fact that every time something like a user, device or application tries to make a new connection attempt, that attempt should be rigorously authenticated and authorized and not simply trusted because it's coming from inside the corporate network, for example. Implement least privilege is the second core principle of a zero trust architecture, which says you should only grant users and applications the minimum amount of access that they need to perform their job effectively and no more. Privileged access management is a great way of implementing least privilege for admin users, for example. And then finally, assume breach. This is my favorite of the zero trust principles because it encourages teams to plan for the worst case scenario and build robust and tested incident response plans so that when attacks do occur, the time to respond is rapid and well practiced. Not only this, but this principle encourages organizations to shrink the target and the impact zone of an attack through networking principles like micro segmentation. So how can IBM security help? We recognize that different clients will have different business drivers and priorities for why they want to deploy zero trust. So we've created four actionable blueprints, depending on where you want to start. They are reduce the risk of insider threat, secure the remote workforce, preserve customer privacy, and protect the hybrid cloud. You can download these with no form filling required from ibm.com. Thanks for watching.